All right, let's go to number four. It says, assume there are two profit-maximizing digital cable TV companies operating in this market. Further assume they are not able, not able to collude on the price and quantity of premium digital channel subscriptions. How many premium digital channel cable subscriptions will be sold when this market reaches a Nash equilibrium? Okay, so let me go to the answer and then back away from the answer. It's not going to be the monopolist situation. What happens is that firms are going to be pushed to go all the way down, according to this data here, to 12,000 12, subscribers at a price of $60. And it goes something like this. This is this game theoretic problem we've been talking about. Let's say we're at 9,000 units, all right? And let's say that one firm decides to basically cheat, right? They both agreed, or they both think they have an agreement, to each take the 9,000 units and share them amongst themselves at 4,500. But one firm says, you know what? I bet you I can get away with getting 10,000 or another 1,000 customers. So one of the firm goes and instead of having 4,500 customers, adds 10 more and gets 5,500 customers this particular individual. That means in the total market, there's no longer 9,000 but 10,000 subscribers. That's going to push the price down roughly from 90, let's say, to $80. So now $80, this one particular firm is making, Okay, so what's happened here? This firm, should only have three zeros here. This firm has done what? They have, they're now selling 5,500 units. They're charging $80 per unit because when they went from 9,000 to 10,000, it pushed the price down, all right? So their revenues go to, let's do it again, eight zero zero eight fives of 40, eight uh, fives of 40, and that's 44, so it's 440,000, okay? So now you have to ask yourself, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. This one firm, by cheating, has now increased its revenue. It subtracts its total cost. To, and now it's making profits of 240000 Well, that's a pretty good deal, right? What has happened to the firm that didn't cheat on their, quote, collusion? So that firm stays at 4,500 units, but the price has been knocked down because there's now 10,000 units being produced in this market. So they have 45, but the price is now $80. So look what happens to them. Zero, zero, eight times zero, zero, eight times zero, zero. And now eight times 40 is 40. Eight fours are 32, and four is 36. Total revenue now is only 3,600, minus their $200,000 fixed key. And now their profits have fallen to 160. They were 205 under collusion. One firm has cheated and increased their profits to 240. The other firm, by not, quote, cheating in this collusion arrangement, has stayed at 4,500 units, half of the 9,000, and their profits are now 160. Okay, well, they say, well, that's not right. If these guys are going to cheat, we're going to kind of break the deal too. So they go and produce 10 more units, and that knocks the price down further. What happens is this keeps going until we get to 1,200 units being sold at a price of $60. Anything lower than that, and they'll start to do worse. So the answer here is that they're going to stop at 1,200 units produced. It's going to get a price of $60. And now that's where this new market's going to reach a Nash equilibrium. By that, it means each firm not trusting the other will pursue the next step until, if you go further than 1,200 units, prices are actually going to I mean, profits are actually going to fall. We can get to that in a minute. So, the answer here is 1,200 is where they're stop. And the next question, number five, is what price they're going to charge? Well, they're both going to charge $60. That's number five. And number six, I know I'm moving quickly on this, but let me just, I'll do it, then we can backtrack. How much are they going to make? So now, you know what? You know, each firm is producing 6,000 units, because there's 12,000 total in the market, and they're sharing this. So there's 6,000 units. We know they're charging $60 a unit, okay? So each firm is going to have revenues of $3,600,000. we are going to subtract the $200,000 fixed cost they have to pay, and now profits are $160 each. Okay? 
It makes no sense to go further down to here, for example, because if they did, what would happen? Well, each firm would get, the price would go to $30. Each firm would sell $7,500. And that's going to give us revenues of what? Well, it's going to give us one, two, three, three fives are 15, and three sevens are 21, and one is 22. That's going to give us revenues for each firm of 225,000, less their 200,000 fixed cost. Their profits are much lower here. They're down to $25,000. So they're not going to pursue a further cut down to here. And we're going to stop here. This is going to be the Nash Equilibrium Okay, and the moral of the story is duopolies that are competing with each other will actually produce more than if they act as a monopolist and the price will be lower for consumers. Now, if this were a world of marginal pricing, because the marginal cost is zero, it would get forced down to zero in a purely competitive market, which we did in Chapter 14. We're not in that world. We're in a duopoly, an oligopoly, and the world of story is they're going to come in somewhere between a very competitive or perfectly competitive market and a market that's dominated by a single firm. So here, I'll just start. This is the monopolistic result. This is the duopolistic result. Okay? So, this is a kind of classic problem, and we've done one through six here. Hopefully, you're seeing the answers as you line these things up. The things you need to do is one, if you just be given price and quantity, always get your total revenue. You can get your marginal revenue, and that helps you decide where the monopolist is going to produce. You can get your profits rather easily because they'll give you the cost figures. If we had a marginal cost, you could figure out what the cost was per unit. That's all accessible. We've done some of that in lecture. And that, you find the monopolistic solution right here. From there, you have to say, okay, duopolies, if they're competing, is going to be something more output, lower price. If they're colluding, they're going to act just like the monopolist. All right? All right, that's problems one through six. I think they're relatively, again, if you just practice this kind of structure, I think you'll get comfortable with it and know what we're doing. We're going to turn now to a more classic presentation of the prisoner's dilemma and this Nash equilibrium. We're going to use the two-by-two two box. I'll be right back.